Uh, Liz Cheney has some uh, very stark warnings for the Supreme Court. You know, Liz Cheney is it really causes or did cause a lot of conflict in me because when she was a representative from Wyoming and because of her old man, the warmongering, uh, torture video enjoying uh, Dick Cheney, I, I could not tolerate the entire Cheney family. And I can never understand the bigotry that exists in the Republican Party because, you know, this is not, I'm not telling you something you don't know, but Liz Cheney's sister, Dick Cheney's other daughter, is a lesbian woman. So big goddamn deal. It's a big deal only because the Republican Party has been so homophobic, so against LGBTQ people, just to the point of becoming obsessive about it. But I digress. Liz Cheney, who has turned out to be, um, I may not agree with her politically on half of what she talks about, but in terms of moral uh, intensity, in, in terms of integrity, she has become somebody whom I very much admire. I don't know if I would vote for her if I were uh, uh, a voter in an election where she was standing to to be a representative or a senator or a city council person, whatever. I don't know. But she and Adam Kinzinger, the two Republicans who served on the J6 committee to me, are heroic in what they did and the stand they took, especially after getting the slings and arrows, you might say, of not outrageous fortune, but the slings and arrows of the fascist Christian bastards who operate inside the now-dead Republican Party. Anyway, she said, Liz Cheney said, that it was critical that Trump's federal election interference case goes to trial before voters select their next president this November. And she is calling on the Supreme Court to recognize uh, the appeal before the Supreme that, that is before the Supreme Court as a delay tactic. This is what Cheney said about a week ago. A matter of fact, exactly a week ago, uh, at an event at Drake University in Iowa, Liz Cheney said this, quote, it cannot be the case that a president of the United States can attempt to overturn an election and seize power and that our justice system is incapable of holding a trial or holding him to account before the next election. That cannot be the case, end quote. And then she added this, quote, And so Donald Trump knows what the most senior members of his administration, his vice president, his attorney general, his acting attorney general, his acting secretary of defense. He knows what all of those people said to the grand jury, and he knows how damaging that will be to him, end quote. And then on Trump's presidential immunity claim that he can get rid of anything because he is... Uh, he is the, the Christ, the Antichrist, whatever the hell this bastard claims to be on any given day. Uh, on the immunity claim, Cheney cautions the Supreme Court to, quote, recognize that what he's doing is a delaying tactic and that allowing for further delays is itself suppression of evidence, end quote. I think it's very clear, at least it is to me, that she is admonishing the Supreme Court. She's telling them, look, if you keep fucking around with these delays, you are aiding and abetting a criminal who is suppressing evidence. Now, we know that she was stripped of her political career because she actually believes and believed when she was defeated in a primary that defending the Constitution was more important than her being a representative from Wyoming. 
Liz Cheney, and, and this is one of the reasons, I guess, I don't know why, I haven't really taken a deep dive into my own feelings about Liz Cheney, but this is one of the reasons I have so much respect for her. She put the country first. She put the Constitution first. In this particular instance, now, yes, I know, some of the things that Liz Cheney has voted for, she voted for Trump, Trump twice. She supported almost everything that Trump came up with during his four terms as uh, the scum bastard who sat in the Oval Office. Um, and I, I, I cannot fault her for that any more than I can fault myself for the feelings I had about Liz Cheney for so many years that she was devoid of any kind of, of integrity or, or, or honesty. So she made a big mistake about Trump. I made a big mistake about her, Okay. So she gave up her political career because she believed that defending the Constitution was more important than her political career. And she still does. She's out there now, and, and she made it very clear that she was going to do everything she could. One woman, everything she could do to prevent this orange antichrist son of a bitch from getting the Oval Office again, at which point constitutional law in this country... Well, the Constitution itself is no longer a viable framework in which we're trying to operate. Trump will end it all. And so she's out there talking about the dangers that allowing Trump's endless delays by the court system, what those delays represent to this republic. And to what she calls uh, future transfers of power. In other words, as, as Trump has made it very clear and his followers have made it clear, there would be no more transfers of power. I mean, if, if Trump gets the Oval Office again, that's it. Until this grungy, filthy pig dies, and then there will probably be an attempt to install one of his deranged sons in, into, into the office. We, we are really on the, on the cusp of, of shit that I, I don't think I ever thought would happen. I know the framers probably didn't think this would ever happen. Uh, anyway, she's also trying to warn people as, as she goes around the country giving her, her talks uh, that if the orange bastard somehow gets the presidency one more time, that because of his lies and his delays and the people around him, the little Nazi fucks who cluster around him, as I've said, like flies around a dung heap, if he gets the office again with those people surrounding him, Cheney's making the case that he most likely will never leave power, ever, until the fucker dies. So... Pointing to examples of, of these Christian fascists supporting Trump's claim of the election having been stolen, she says that the country's politics are undergoing what she calls a tectonic shift. She said, quote, certainly what's happening in the Republican Party is dangerous. We now have one of our two major political parties that has abandoned the Constitution, end quote. That, that, uh, is there a heavier charge? Of, of sedition and fascism and treason than that? Because what they're talking about, she still refers to the Republican Party as a, a viable entity, which you and I both know it is not. But I, I, I guess because she doesn't want to use kind of the ridiculous terms that I use, like Christian fascists or American fascists or proto-Nazis or whatever, Liz Cheney is still going to refer to the Republican Party, fair enough. But her point that that party has abandoned the Constitution, I, I, I mean, that is a staggering statement, and it's based on fact and observation and what the orange bastard is advocating and what the filth around him is advocating. Hi. <sighs> She also said this, quote, We know Trump tried once not to leave office, and he will have no incentive to guarantee a peaceful transfer of power, 
and to leave office should he be selected again. She went on, as frustrated as I know people get sometimes with policy disagreements you might have, and I certainly have policy disagreements with the Biden administration, I know the nation can survive bad policy. We cannot survive a president who is willing to torch the Constitution. End quote. Liz Cheney. Well, there you have it. Um, you know, her statement there, and, and I remember the interview that uh, uh, Rachel Maddow did with Liz Cheney. You talk about oil and water sitting across from each other. Good God in heaven. Liz Cheney <laughs> and Rachel Maddow. And, and Maddow... Uh, And this is one of the reasons I have great respect for Rachel, aside from having worked at the same broadcast entity as she did at one time, Air America. But one of the reasons I have such respect for her is she just stated it categorically. She got it out front before. I mean, once once she was talking with Liz, she said to Liz's face, you know, you and I, I'm paraphrasing, you and I, Rachel was saying, disagree on practically everything. But on this, we can agree that the Constitution of the United States has got to remain intact if we are to continue this effort at a democratic republic. And, and, and Cheney sat there and agreed with her. I mean, to see those two women sitting there. And nobody could be more of a solid progressive than Rachel Maddow. Nobody could be more of a solid conservative than Liz Cheney. But the conversation, if you happen to have seen that, was incredible between these two. So her statement, we, we can have policy differences. Of course we can. And, and her statement when she said, I certainly have policy disagreements with the Biden administration. Of course she does. She's a Republican. She's a conservative. But the point she made, and, and this is what the, the Trump scum refused to acknowledge, and what so many people refuse to acknowledge, and that is the nation can survive bad policy. The thing about a democratic system, and, and I, I mean, the only example I think we have of this is, is, is us, the United States, over the past two and a half centuries. But the nation can survive bad policy. I mean, my God, if we could survive slavery, if we could survive Jim Crow, if we could survive the the wars we got involved in that we had no business getting into that was strictly to satisfy corporate America or the fascist undercurrent that just runs through this country constantly, we survived it. We're not going to survive Trump. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me... Mike Malloy are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.